Hey, what's up everyone? It's Fred and I am in Scottsdale, Arizona right now. I just did a drop off. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about the vehicle that I recently purchased and I'm going to talk to you about why I purchased that vehicle versus another vehicle that could have been a brand new car. And I think this will make sense. And for those that are looking at getting into Turo, I think this is gonna be a great video of picking the right car and a purpose for picking that specific vehicle. So stay tuned. So a month ago, or probably a little over a month ago, I purchased a 24, I'm sorry, a 2018 BMW convertible hardtop 4 Series, it's a 430i. And I actually love the price that I got it for. So I got it for about 5,500 below uh, fair market value. And when I purchased it, at that time, I wasn't looking specifically for this vehicle. Uh, I was looking for a convertible. I was looking for a BMW convertible. I was looking at two series, three series, even four series. And uh, I came across this one and it was definitely a great deal. So uh, the car has 38,000 miles and it's a 2018. Extremely great condition inside and out. Um, it's, it's pretty flawless. And uh, the, the reason I ended up purchasing it is because in doing research here in the Phoenix area, Scottsdale area, uh, I definitely wanted a convertible as my next vehicle. As you've seen in my other video, I have a 2014 BMW, which still rents out. It's a 5 Series sedan, and that still rents out. It's actually, someone picked it up uh, this morning as well. But this one ended up dropping off at a five-star resort here in Scottsdale. So the reason I chose the 4 Series convertible, first of all, was the price point. But also, I specifically was targeting convertible BMWs only because BMWs do so well on Turo. Uh, they have a good following on Turo. And it's uh, mid-October. And as you can see here, I'm in a t-shirt, the sun's out, beautiful weather. So I was targeting a convertible specifically for really this time of year, uh, September through uh, April, when it's pretty, pretty good weather here for the most part. So I'll tell you, I got the vehicle for 31,000 know, plus tax and stuff. Uh, I did end up purchase, purchasing an extended warranty, which added to that cost, but I was definitely comfortable. Uh, obviously a vehicle like a BMW, I definitely want to make sure I have as much coverage because everything is so expensive to repair uh, if anything goes bad. So. I was okay with uh, purchasing that extended warranty. So uh, when I bought the vehicle, or when I was searching specifically for BMWs, here's what I was looking at. First of all, what can I rent out for at least $100 a day? And uh, BMW convertibles, uh, check that box. Uh, I didn't wanna go with a Mustang convertible because first of all, those are soft tops and there's too many of them and they also don't go for the price that the bmw would go for on turo so i know like there's actually one in my area uh, it's a it's a, uh, a v8 it's a gt uh, convertible and it runs out for 79 bucks a day well that's before discounts uh, you know three plus days i've checked it's like 75 dollars a day I think it's a 2019 uh, GT as well. So I'm not sure. I mean, I'm sure, well, I'm pretty sure that that person paid at least what I paid for my vehicle, maybe even more, being that it's a 2019 GT. Actually, I'm, I'm, I think he paid a little more uh, than what I paid for mine. I got mine for $31,000, you know, plus tax. And, um, you know, in doing research prior to committing to the vehicle, I was looking at price points, like, hey, what does a two series go out for? I was doing market research, which uh, should be your starting point uh, if you're looking at getting into Turo. 
uh, check the vehicle that you're interested in and check what it's going for, how often it's renting out. Now, if you go through a regular browser, so not the Turo app, but if you go through a regular browser, Turo.com, and you search, uh, you find vehicles in your area, especially if it's later in the month, you'll see not only future bookings, but also prior bookings that month. So that will give you a good idea of how frequently cars rent out for. And you also wanna see what they're offering. Do they offer delivery? Do they charge for delivery? Is it free delivery? Uh, and then also, if you wanna go back further historically, you wanna look at their review frequency, which is not really, doesn't tell you really the full story because not everyone does reviews. For me, uh, I think I'm 27 trips, 26 trips in, and most of my guests, I think except two have left like a written review. Two or th three actually have uh, not uh, left a written review. And of course with the written review, it shows the date of when that review was posted. So that's why, um, that's important uh, when you're searching. So um, uh, in looking at four series, I saw there was only about 11, 11 or 12 hardtop convertibles in the Phoenix area. And I like the price point that they were going for. Uh, I mean, during slow times, like with this delivery right here, uh, after discounts, my uh, rate for this vehicle was $101 a day. And then I charged uh, $70 for delivery. Um, so, but as it starts picking up here during the holiday season, uh, especially here uh, in the spring, we got a lot going on. Uh, we have the Phoenix Open. Uh, this coming uh, February, we got the Super Bowl here. Uh, we have spring training here in February, March. So this convertible is gonna just kill it for me. It's just gonna do very well. Uh, my day rate's gonna probably be uh, close to $200, if not even more than $200, especially that Super Bowl week. Uh, I think I could, uh, I, I did some research for that time of year. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to be a very, first of all, it's going to be a busy season, but also what I could charge for my vehicle will be quite a bit. Now, when I got the vehicle, just like when I got my first vehicle, I know like I see a lot of comments out that people list their vehicle and they get a booking the same day or the next day, um, they already have, have bookings. Well, with me, from my experience with my first car and now with this car, that wasn't really the case. So what I uh, ended up doing here because it was a slow start I started offering delivery and I started offering delivery to the airport of course but then also I looked at uh, just five-star resorts uh, that are pretty close and convenient for me to get to from my house and I came across uh, three of them uh, which one of them I ended up dropping off to uh, for a $70 fee like I said so it's uh, with this uh, booking here, I ended up uh, clearing $368. It's a four day booking. I'm on the 75 plan, which means Turo takes 25%. So easy math, $100 a day, four days, $400. Turo took 100, 20, they're 25%. And then I got the, uh, the $70 uh, delivery fee. So, uh, and the reason I was specific to these five-star resorts was because of who I'm trying to target. Uh, obviously the airport, but also these five-star resorts, you know, I don't wanna, uh, could I offer delivery to a double tree? Yeah, but it, uh, for me, I'm trying to target a different type of uh, market there. So that's why, um, I charge what I charge and you know the the service that I'm providing uh, so as soon as I started offering delivery even for my 2014 I started getting bookings so uh, I've done well my my five series that went out today actually went out it was initially a delivery to the airport and then um, the guest called me and, and she said 
hey, I need to change the, because originally she booked it for Saturday and she needed it for today, which is Friday. So she actually called me because uh, when, when you, uh, your phone number is on Turo, so uh, the guest has access to, to your phone number. So she called me pretty much right away and she wanted to modify it to Friday. And then um, she was flying in early, super early, like she was landing at like 6.30 in the morning. And, uh, I'm available at 8 a.m. or later. So uh, fortunately with her, I talked her into picking up the vehicle. Uh, so she took an Uber from the airport uh, to my house. And I told her, hey, you know, instead of paying the delivery fee, the Uber's pretty much gonna cost you that anyways round trip. So I talked her into picking up the car from my house. She picked it up. She came around 7.30, 7.35 and picked that up. And then, you know, I had this delivery for uh, 10 o'clock. And uh, so where I'm going with this here is you want to offer as much as you can to be successful on Toro. Uh, if you're uh, requiring a six hour advance notice, 12 hour advance notice before someone can pick up the vehicle, uh, you're missing out on a lot. Like I've mentioned, I think in my previous video. So you want to be available, uh, you know, right away. You want to, like with me, my cars are available in an hour. Now, it's rare that I get a booking, you know, and they're at my home the next hour, but it's happened once, but I've gotten a lot of same day bookings, like three hour, you know, two, three hours later from the time they booked it, they picked it up. So that's why it's important having that one hour advance notice. And what um, really helped me in having that flexibility now because I do have a full-time job. So having that flexibility where I can, you know, leave for a couple hours, three hours, if I need to, to do a delivery, I'm available. And that's really what's helped me secure a lot more bookings. So I, I do charge for the uh, delivery, as I mentioned, although I do offer free delivery within five miles from my home on my convertible, not on my uh, five series. It's a five series. My day rate on that is right around 70 bucks. So for me to offer free delivery, if they do a one, two day booking, it's, is it worth it? Yeah, but you know, not as much as me locking in a hundred dollar day rate. So that's why I offer free delivery within five miles for the five series, not the, or for the four series, not the five series. So when I chose this, this four series convertible for 31,000. So if you're looking at getting into Turo, here's what you want to think about. I probably could have got a brand new Camry for 30,000, 31,000. But with the Camry, there's only so much you could charge. Like uh, checking my area, not that I've ever considered listing a Camry, but just doing a ton of market research in my area. Uh, newer Camrys, I mean, I see them pretty much from 60 to $80 a day, maybe $85 a day at the maximum. So if I'm spending 30, 31,000 on a car, why would I want to get a car that'll only get me, you know, say 70, $75 a day versus a car that at a minimum will get me a hundred dollars a day. So that's what you want to think about uh, if you're looking at purchasing a vehicle here what day rate can you get for that vehicle? So what, whatever your budget is, if it's 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 70,000, you, you wanna see what your day rate's gonna be for the vehicle that you're considering. Because, um, prime example, just the one that I gave you guys. So you definitely wanna make as much as you can for that, for that price, purchase price of the vehicle. And, you know, being a convertible, Again, it's gonna be probably pretty fully booked uh, for the next six, seven months, maybe here. And I'm excited about that. And uh, I'm excited about the price point. I'm excited about um, the vehicle. And I got the vehicle with 38,000 miles, like I mentioned. So, uh, you know, it's it's definitely, you know, I won't, I won't, I won't be having any issues, at least any major issues. 
in the near future. I think I'm good for, you know, uh, maybe the next 20, 25,000 miles, uh, possibly. We'll see how it goes. Again, I do have the warranty, so, you know, I'm not totally worried uh, about that. But that's what you want to think about. Because a lot of times, you know, people are buying these vehicles, they're getting these brand new vehicles, and they're listing them for like $45, $55 a day, and they're spending $25,000 on a car, and they're only getting, you know, 55 bucks a day for like a Nissan. Um, you know, when you can get a, a used vehicle that would be a, that would provide a great experience. So know, knowing where you're at, you know, what what sort what would your guests want to experience when they're visiting your city so i know with me i mean i've never owned a convertible i don't think i've ever driven a convertible before this one but i know that those would be very very popular here in the phoenix area especially you know when it's not 110 degrees outside during the summer so uh that's what you want to do you want to whatever your budget is on purchasing a vehicle or the monthly payment you want to look at all right well how much would this car rent out for so do your research how frequently does it rent out and like i said use the reviews as uh and to give you an idea as to how often those vehicles get rented uh, also like i said using a regular browser phone or whatnot uh, and just going on Turo.com because it'll show uh, the month. So if you see a date scratched, you know that it was booked that, that day. Uh, so usually the last week of the month would be a good time to research that because that way it gives you a good idea of, let's say, you know, here we're almost at the end of October. Uh, it'll give you a good idea of not only how many, how many days it was booked for already, but how many future days is it booked for, uh, which is uh, a nice resource to use. And uh, so that's what you want to do. You want to see, you know, whether you live up in the mountains, you know, maybe maybe a, a four wheel drive, a pickup truck uh, will will be popular where you where you are living. Uh, maybe a Tahoe, a suburban, uh, or you know, if, if you're a forerunner. A forerunner, I think, does pretty well for the most part in um, you know climb areas where the climate gets uh, you know pretty cold and snow and all that. So you want to get a four-wheel, you know, forerunner maybe. So do your market research and just you want to you want to provide a vehicle that is functional pretty much year-round, but especially during the time of year when you get a lot of visitors in your area. So like, if you're in Colorado, Denver, you know, you got your peak season there is uh, the winter. That's probably when most people are visiting, they're going skiing and whatnot. So that's why you wanna provide a vehicle that will do well during the busy time. Um, so, you know, yeah, getting a Nissan, getting a, a Toyota, a Camry, uh, Corolla, yeah, it's 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 good. it's nice, but you know it's not the route where you'll probably maximize the money that you'll be making off Turo. So um, I just wanted to share that with you guys how I came to the decision of purchasing my car, my thought process, and hopefully you guys can use that and uh, whatever market you're in. Uh, hopefully it. Uh, help open some eyes a little bit, catch a little more open-minded. Uh, and yeah, definitely um, offering delivery has made a, a difference for me, even though I'm charging. Um, actually, I'm probably gonna increase my delivery fee to, uh, I'm gonna, if, if I'm continuing, continuously getting uh, deliveries, I'm probably gonna bump it up to $85. I want to stay away from 100. The maximum you could charge is 120. I want to stay away from the triple digits. Uh, I just don't want that, uh, you know, sticker shock. The, you know, the triple digits versus double digits. So uh, I may uh, add another 15 to my delivery fee, 85 dollars. 
if I'm getting a lot of deliveries. But again, if you're flexible, if you're able to offer deliveries, it's it's really uh, and even even if you're not actually delivering, but the fact that you're offered delivery, you definitely rank higher. So your car's gonna show up in more searches, and and that's key too. Yeah, you wanna you wanna have as many eyeballs on your vehicle as possible. So uh, that's why offering one hour advance notice, offering delivery uh, to the airport, to certain resorts, uh, you know. And again, with me, um, I'm targeting those five star resorts. Uh, I got a nice nice vehicles. Well, at least my convertible is pretty nice. Uh, and that's the market that I want to target there. And also uh, for my delivery, so because I have a full-time job, for my delivery, uh, I, I adjust it throughout the day, but uh, for the most part, I have a six hour advance notice requirement on deliveries. And the reason I did that is because I don't want to have to, uh, you know, have to, leave work right then and there make sure my car is gassed up um, or get, get gas before i go to the airport for example all within like an hour hour and a half so the six hour advance notice for delivery works for me but as it gets later in the day uh, i change it to three hours and two hours uh, but i don't i don't do anything less than two hours for delivery just again because um, i don't want to have to rush take photos drive there get there maybe i hit traffic so uh you, you play with your settings but uh, you know the main one is the advance uh notice for picking up your vehicle from your home location that has to be an hour two hours max um, three hours you might be missing out and also the good thing with having those uh, same day bookings or bookings within 24 hours like with me uh, I have a $10 uh, last minute booking uh, charge. So if I'm charging a hundred bucks for my car, I get an extra 10 bucks a day times, you know, four days. So that's another 40 bucks that I capture just being available within an hour and um, having my uh, vehicle available to pick up uh, or even deliver in, in uh, some cases. So hopefully that helps you guys as you're considering joining Turo uh, you know what thinking about hey what car you know what what car would do well in my area what should I look for what deal and you know generally speaking too you want to make sure that you cover your uh, monthly uh, fee or your monthly cost of the vehicle your payment um, within you know if, if you have it covered if, if your day rate gets your payment covered in five days you're doing phenomenal. You're doing phenomenal. But uh, really seven, eight days max is what you wanna do uh, to at least cover your payments. You know, for me, seven days is max. And uh, you know, with these bookings, and I'll show you my uh, calendar in another video that I'll make. Uh, this next week, uh, uh, I'm making uh, pretty good money, which is rare, but it's definitely picked up. The reason it's picked up again is offering that delivery, having more exposure, more eyeballs looking at the listing. So hopefully this helps you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. I'll respond. If you're thinking about a certain car in a certain area, uh, I don't mind uh, offering my opinion on what type of car you should be looking at. So drop that all in the comments and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks guys.